How would you describe yourself as an artist? Uh, experimental, um, observational, um, colourful. Okay, what is, what is abstract painting? Are you an abstract painter? No, I don't oh. think I'm an abstract painter, I think I'm an abstract image maker. Um, I'm, I'm not afraid to use paint, but it's not my kind of weapon of choice at the moment. Um, the, the, tape, the gaffer tape and the vinyl that I'm using, for me, the, re the restrictions are more exciting because they're more of a challenge for me to work with. So to change direction um, of the lines, the colour, um, requires a little bit more thought. So it's, I've latched onto that and it's something uh, very much about process in what I do. I think you need to get out of your system or do it enough times to to feel comfortable to know that that's kind of muscle memory stored that I can use it again. Okay, okay, so we're in the realms of abstract expressions, okay. aren't we? Yeah. I think. I mean, so this is yes. about physicality, you talk about process yeah. a lot, we're talking about these, you know, um, quite physical materials that have got a certain give and you also we talked about the situation where you went into this exhibition and had to deal with the space. Um, how, how do you keep sane? How, how do you not panic in that situation? You know, have you got a, a toolkit that you rely on that, that you know well, you'll be okay? There'll be this variation. Of yeah. Um, I think the anchors are always going to be a strong point with whatever image I use. So if in this instance, it was the framed um, screen printed. Uh, skyline that, that um, was the, the zigzag um, and the, how I work I will always have an anchor that is that has been developed from an, uh, an initial drawing because all of my work does start from initial drawings of, of what I observe again this body of work has been about architecture uh, it's something I wouldn't have I don't think it would have been my first choice if I'd have been doing this 20 years ago but it seems to resonate uh, quite strongly with me and I feel quite comfortable there's a connection there um, so I know that I've always got a solid structure to work with um, without it sounding you know hopefully not too arrogant I do have some confidence in my ability and know that I can piece it together you know there's enough experience whether I've been teaching it or whether I've been physically doing it I know how exhibitions work I've put, put them up and, and recently had the, the, the opportunity to be part of so, if 20 year old Chris or 21 year old Chris came with the same work, what do you know now that you didn't know then that me? <laughs> what did, would you have struggled back then? Yeah, so very much so. Yeah, I would have been absolutely daunted. Um, uh, and I probably wouldn't have had the confidence to do it then as well. I think my work was very different back then. You know, I, my degree was in illustration, so. It, Initially, I wanted to be a book illustrator. That was my my dream. Um, so it was very character narrative led with the things that I was doing then. Um, and I think ha as it's gone on, I've evolved. I've become more comfortable with my work. Um, and maybe the time that I've had to step back and observe and be part of other people's work and see what other people are doing um, has kind of filtered in. And then I had a really big influence on what I do now. So there seems to be a theme with this company <laughs> that we seem to be working with creatives that somehow tread a line between design and art. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and aren't worried about those distinctions too much and yeah. move. And yeah, and you're, with you, it's more that it's been over time. You've gone from that discipline yeah. to this discipline. Yeah. Can you ever see yourself going back? Are there things you've learned from bit, you know, training in design to now being a fine artist? Are there, and is there, are there benefits that you went through that? Oh, absolutely, yeah. To, to have um, a general... When I, when I first started at Art College, it was a very general pathway. Um, I did have a, a period where I went down the graphic design route, um, but then went back into kind of general art design and then focused on illustration, which is strongly linked to graphics. Um, and I suppose also fine art as well. Um, but I was in an environment that was actively very open and encouraged to, to be as, as kind of far reaching as you can and use as many disciplines as you can. Um, 
but yeah, it's like your formative years, isn't it? That training, it embeds in with you. And um, so, you know, I feel that my work can go very commercial, it can be designed from, it can also go in the, uh, a fine art, I can paint from it. Um, I've started to develop ideas for sculptures and assemblages and that for, for it as well. So, yeah, it's, it, it works on, on many levels. Okay, how do you feel about, <coughs> sorry, how do you feel about selling how, how the art market works? How, do you, are you looking forward and saying, how am I going to sell this work? Yes, uh, some pieces that I, I do, I think you could, I, I could see them as something commercial, uh, as prints or as cards or as posters. Um, the kind of canvas painting, white cube kind of area uh, is still a little bit unknown, um, just kind of scratching the surface with that. So I'm actively focusing on that in the work that I'm producing. So if the opportunity does arise for me to place it there, uh, I've got the product to work with on its own or as part of a, uh, an installation. Um, do, you, do you think it's part of our time that as an artist, you, you talk about your practice and, and it's obvious that you're very involved in your practice and, and you're informed on that and you're going and thinking about that. But then all of a sudden you can say product and you can think of different commercial environments. Yeah. Is that of our time, the artists? Yeah, think I think that they are all products, you know, whether it is in a, in a, a, a gallery or whether it's, you know, in a, a shop for the inside. They're, they, they're both, as opposed to commercial venues in one way or another, aren't they? They're, they're selling things, they're making money from them. Um, I, I've, I've said this to you guys quite a lot. Not that I'm not precious about my work, I am very precious. I take a lot of pride in what I do. I'm not precious about where it goes or what direction it goes in because this is this is very unknown to me still. I don't think many people get the chance to to enjoy the journey or to have a journey like this. So for me, this is part of the excitement, and you know I will grab hold of it and uh, and let it direct me as much as I'm directing it really. So this is, this is very much part of your your process. Uh, <coughs> You, you call an artistic process. Yeah. Um, it's very fluid and and, yeah. feel, and works in a way that could work commercially as well. Yeah. But you follow this path, you don't know where it's going to go. No. But products might spare out yeah. of this process. Yeah. Well, the body of work that I'm working on at the moment, which is um, which is installed somewhere else at the moment, um, to be shown later on. I've always already started the process of how. I'm going to turn that into a poster or some greeting cards for another little event I'm doing. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's get back to basics. Okay. So, tell us your name. Chris. Chris Drake. How long have you been an artist for? Um, I picked this back up again in October 2017. Um, so I would say being an art. <laughs> I've been an artist since I was an art college, since I was 16, um, but I've been an artist again for the past two years. Okay, where did you train? Uh, Brighton, um, that's where I did my degree. Okay, and you're now doing? Uh, an MA in Fine Art at De Montfort. Okay, tell us about De Montfort and the MA. Uh, it's been very challenging. It's questioned me, questioned my practice. Uh, I thought I was in one place that uh, I felt comfortable with, but I'm really, I feel really fortunate that I've had the opportunity that people have pushed me and picked apart my work, given me different perspectives to look at it, at it from, uh, different contexts to place it in. Um, uh, previous things before, like about how you present things may not have been at the forefront of my mind, but I think there's there's value and uh, there's really importance in, in how you present things as well. Um, okay. Um, is there an agenda on the course for? We've seen historically with fine art teaching, but there, there can often be an agenda. A course seems to eject yeah. a certain type of person in different places, different points in time. Is there an agenda on the fine art at DMU? Uh, not that, that I think. I think the only agenda is that, that we are being pushed to be individual um, 
and to understand the world of contemporary fine art, oh, sorry, contemporary fine art in the context of our own practice. The, the practice that we are all doing is very different. Um, there isn't a lot of similarity between um, the, the students that are on there. Uh, so yeah, I would say the only agenda is about understanding your own individual. Okay, so you'd recommend that course? Uh, yeah, 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 I've enjoyed it, I've got a lot out of it. Okay, um, so you teach? I do. Tell us about your teaching. Um, I teach at Leicester College and I teach at DMUIC um, for level three, uh, sorry, level one, level two, level three, level four, level five. Uh, generally under a general art design um, and guides with different pathways, so from students that are going on to do uh, degrees in graphic design, illustration, product design, fine art, photography, fashion. Um, as with my practice and, and my experience being quite broad, I feel that I can offer a lot in terms of concept, understanding, product placement, um, process. Um, so yeah, it's providing a, a real solid foundation for those students to move okay. on. If you're teaching, you're doing a lot of teaching, yeah. you're doing a lot of work, you're doing your own work. How the hell have you got time? Um, <laughs> the reality of that has, has hit home uh, with a bang this this term. Um, it's been really difficult, but I'm under the I'm not under the illusion. I am of the mindset that it's twelve months out of your life. I'm going to grab it with both hands, um, do as much as I can. If you're tired for a little bit, so be it. The the rewards far outweigh any kind of negative um, or, or weariness about it, you know, there's, there's so much positive stuff that's come out of it, so. Are there a mix range of ages on the course? On the MA? Yeah. Uh, yes, there's some that have come straight from um, undergrad um, and there is probably about half of us that have been in uh, the world of work yeah, <laughs> and yeah. come back and picked it up which I think is, is it's been a better option for me to do that I don't think I would have got the same out of it or, or worked in the same way if I'd have gone straight from my undergrad course onto a, a master's okay what about the age, the age range mix within a creative environment a learning environment within the arts does that work is it is it good having a mix yeah absolutely yeah I think so there's been um I've certainly learned from people on my course, and you know, so the, the, the ones that are younger, there's been some really um, uh, new ways of thinking that I hadn't uh, kind of experienced new products, new uh, new things being made. And, and even with my students that I teach at, at, at Leicester College and DMUIC, you know, they'll come up with concepts and ideas and products, you know, I haven't seen that. So I don't, I think it's irrelevant how old you are or how much experience you are. If you're invested in doing this, then, you know, it, it's all valid. Yeah. Okay, so, <coughs> um, the graph work show, um, where did, where did graph, you know, originally find out about you? How, how did you first find um, out? It was from an exhibition at the LCB, um, from the Loop exhibition. Um, I entered an illustration of the Turkey Cafe that I had done. And then from that, you guys um, had Gallery Without Walls. And I was one of the eight that was chosen or asked to be part of that. Okay, then that led on to the solo show. Yeah, show. yeah, again, to know you guys better, having more conversations, coming down to meet you, find out a bit more about what, what each of us do. Um, and then, yeah, Graph were a relatively new venue when the space came up. And yeah, jumped at it. Okay, so we're joining some dots. We're here at LCB in yesterday. Yeah. Right? You had your solo show craft work. Yeah. You were at LCB, you know, you were, where were you from the Gallery Without Walls? Uh, I was at the party island that never went up, so. <laughs> <laughs> you can edit that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I had a poster over there on the, was it the Exchange Bar that's down there? No. I thought I'd see where that one goes. <laughs> But that's fine, I think, because if, I think if that had gone up and maybe, maybe it had been my first outing that was further than kind of just this bit, 
I don't think that would have been a good representation of my wife. It would have been at that time, but what I'm doing really now, really yeah, I think it's changed really so really much. Well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so multi dimensional, solo show. Yeah. As an artist at this point in time, is it the right time for you having a solo show? Did it feel too early or was it the right time? Or? No, I felt it was the, it was the right time. Um, what I've learned from this year by taking a step back, although I'm teaching full time now, that wasn't the intention when I started off in September, um, was to go with my intuition and my gut feeling and I didn't have any doubts about taking or undertaking that uh, that show on. Um, it was good for me as well because the, the space that I had originally shown or shown that body of work in wasn't on reflection the right space. So to have the opportunity to let it breathe and move in a different direction, um, who's not going to yeah. you know, grab that opportunity? And, and it's good to work with, with other guys such as yourself as well because that was a new experience. So. So, you, people were literally walking over your work on the floor. Yeah. How does that work? Um, another artist that I've been really, or I am really inspired by, is Jim Lammy, who works um, on the floor with, with vinyl and tape. Um, uh, I suppose just about breaking down the, the, the traditions or the confines of going, you know, you can only look at a piece of work on the wall. If people are enjoying it and experiencing it and being involved in it, I'm not in a position where I can go, people can only view my work like this or this can only happen with this. You know, I'm, I'm very open to, to the new opportunities. Um, if people are walking on it, it might add something else to it. It's from an environment that's industrial, that's weathered, that, that is open to the elements. So I think it's only fair that parts of the work are allowed to be treated in the same way as where I'm originating it from or where it originates yeah, yeah. <laughs> from where it originates okay back back to the idea of a space that's inhabited by these graffiti artists how, how did you feel going into that space and the people you met there in that environment uh the the people that i met were absolutely amazing you know really kind of big thanks to izzy and to anthony and, and everybody else that are really welcoming um, they had obviously seen my work before, so I, I'd like to think that they thought that it would, would have a, a context and a place within you know, what, they, what they sell and what they're about. Um, yeah, it's, it's, as I said, it's led me on to, to looking at different artists, it's led me on to, to becoming uh, or, or getting to know people within that community, which has then led on to the possibility of taking the work outside. Uh, and mixing it with a, you know, the graffiti kind of um, uh, language that's out there that's already on the walls. Um, it, it's progressive. They seem really progressive. That that environment seems really progressive, which fits in with my ethos and where I want my work to go. Okay. Anything you want to talk about? Any areas you want to cover? Um, I don't know, I would like to mention about the Urban Sketches Leicester because they played a really big part in how this has evolved for me. So uh, in terms of, for people who want to start out and maybe get involved in this, I would say that that's a really good starting point. It's full of lots of creatives, uh, there's lots of connections, there's lots of conversations and opportunities, uh, lots of variation in terms of where you draw, um, non-judgmental, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of ability you are as well. But, for me, that was kind of the switch that went back on again from them. So what is that? Is that a club? Or uh, it's, uh, Urban Sketches Less, it's official now, but they, um, just a group of, of, of artists that go around and document uh, various kind of places within the city. Um, last week we were at the fire station on Lancaster Road. Um, but yeah, if anybody is kind of a little bit unsure, go out there and, and join in with that group. So. And that's what kicked off? That's what started for me, just a, a chance opportunity. A friend had said that she was going and did I want to go down with her and it all started at the curve. Uh, and I went, yeah, okay, then I uh, took my sketchbook, uh, took a few magic markers with me and then went. Uh, and I, I think seeing my work in context of others as well made me 
see that it was valid and, and it was worth pursuing and because uh, we can all be a little bit self-doubting and you know not think that we we're, we're kind of allowed to do that but you know for me it was okay one all right then one last thing and that's <coughs> slightly heavy in terms of process. okay um so if we're in the realms of abstract expressionism yep. you talk about your process and you're using these physical physical products tell someone if someone hasn't seen photos of Jackson Pollock leaning over his paintings, somebody who doesn't know abstract expressionism, how does that, how does it work in terms of relating the work to physicality or to the time or... <laughs> okay, right. So, <clears throat> if, if we go back in time to Jackson Pollock, okay, and Jackson Pollock um, is being seen as a hero for Americanism, abstract expressionism and there's the culture's very middle age, he's middle age, so he's seen he's called in the way teenagers be called now. Yeah. And he's physically spraying paint across his canvases. And there's a certain relationship to his body, arm length, and the physicality of this canvas. And you've talked about your work yeah. in terms of you moving around the space and dealing with the space and dealing with it at, at the time. You've got vinyl and tape that can change yeah. for the environment. What is there about physical process in your art that's important? Okay, I suppose it makes me feel like I've done a, a hard day's work, or you know, a hard day's work for a good day's pay. Is that the saying? Um, the the physicality of it, yeah, it's it's about having that connection as well. You know, I, I don't want to be detached from my work. I don't. For for me, it wouldn't work to be. Um, you know, not not linked to it. So by being physical with it, in terms of the the size that I'm working at, you know, if you're putting tape on the, the floor and the walls, you know, you're up ladders, you're on the, the floor, you're getting dirty. And if I'm printing, I've got ink all over me. I have to generate the artwork and physically prepare the screens and expose them. And you're setting up um, and registering your work, um, which. Yeah, maybe takes away any kind of worry I have about what I'm going to do with it because I'm just taking it all in all the time, whether I'm looking at it or or feeling it or, or developing it that way. Is there a sense that it can't go wrong? That's yeah, absolutely, point. because if it does go wrong, then there's cut it down, add another colour to it, put a bit of tape over it. It's yeah, yeah, I don't, I, I don't want to be confined by working like that because I think it would just make me close up and then I'd go, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking what other people want and not what I want, so. Okay, so how do you go for quality there? How do you know if it's any good? Do you need an editor? Are you editing? Um, I am, I think you've got to stand back from your work, often. Um, I think that other people can be involved, whether you take their opinions on board or not is a different matter, but um, I would always be open to other people having opinions. Um, I've learned to be more brave in um, with social media. I'm posting my work out there as well. Uh, on the whole, you know, I've had a really positive response. So, and it's been consistent as well. You know, I'm quite, I've been quite regular in what I've posted. I've been quite prolific in the amount of work um, that I've produced. So, I think there's enough of a, a story and a narrative going on for for people to be involved with my work or to see my work and know if it was going in a different direction or going wrong, I'd like to think that the, the kind of circle of people I'm having conversations with now would, would be honest to say. And I think, you know, they know the way that I work and, and, and how I respond and yeah, I'd always welcome that. It's good to be critical as, as, well, as, as well as it is to be complimentary, so. Okay, thank you Chris. Thank you and, and thank you to you guys as well for the opportunity and um, you know the, the relationship that we're kind of building up and, and where it's going on. I very much look forward to where it goes in the future.